Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Uh, we have a next lecture of chapter number 20 that is 20.8 half life and rate of decay. Okay. First, uh, I'm going to introduce you some terms. So look at what is meant by n not n not mean the original number of nuclei nuclei is the plural of nucleus are the initial number of nuclei okay and what is n n is the remaining number of nuclei are the final number of nuclei okay what is meant by delta n delta n means decay and decay means the change and you know that the decay is always negative because the number of nuclei is get decreasing while emitting radiations of alpha particle beta particle and gamma particle so the radioactive process is going to decrease okay and this decrease is a great uh, is a random process okay now what is meant by delta n by delta t that is called the decay rate decay rate or this called decay per second so this is called the decay per second okay look at the statement the statement of radioactive decay law is decay rate is directly proportional to a naught is directly proportional to n naught means if the n naught is greater the initial nuclei number of nuclei is greater decay rate will be high i'm giving you an example so you will inshallah got it look at here get it now look at here suppose we have uh, a sample having one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 number of nuclei. And here if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 number of nuclei. Here n naught is 4. And here n naught is 20. So here n naught is great, uh, smaller and here the n naught is smaller, uh, greater. Number of nuclei here in the sample is greater. Number of nuclei in the sample is smaller. Both have the same nature. Okay. If both have the same nature so both will be have the same half life okay uh, leave the half life for a while we, i'll inshallah define it later on first look at here suppose after 10 years i'm taking the same time because both have the same nature so during the 10 years both the sample emitting radiations alpha particle beta particle and gamma particle both the sample is going to a radiate emit a radiation emit radiations and radiations and this sample is going to decrease the number of atom in this sample is also in, uh, decreased so look at the final suppose after half after uh, 10 years after 10 years 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 1 2 so the remaining number of nuclei here is 10 then the remaining number of nuclei here is 2 so uh, now I am going to find the decay in this sample. So decay means the final minus initial. So the final is 10, the initial is 20. So it is minus 10. Minus, so and remember decay is always negative. So it means 10 nuclei is being decayed here in this process. And look at this sample. I am going to find the decay in this uh, sample. So decay is equal to final minus initial. So final here is 2, initial was 4, so it is minus 2. So here the decay is smaller. Why? Because the N0 is smaller. And here the decay is greater. Why? Because the N0 is greater. So it means decay depend upon N0. So look at the look at this, um, statement. Decay rate is directly proportional to N0. So decay rate will be greater where N0 is greater. So both are directly proportional. And remember decay is always negative. So I'll place a minus sign. Okay. 
now if we remove the proportionally sign so we will place a constant and that constant is lambda so lambda is car the decay constant or the probability of decay okay lambda is car the decay constant the unit of lambda is per second the unit of lambda is per second what is lambda lambda depends depends on nature of the material it does not depend upon the temperature of material it it depends on the nature of the sample what lambda explains lambda explains stability lambda explains stability okay remember i'm going to write a relation between lambda and stability look at here if a sample is more stable its lambda the value of lambda will be smaller if a sample is less stable if the sample is less stable its the value of lambda will be greater so lambda and stability both are inversely proportional so lambda explain the nature of the material whether the material is stable or not so lambda will tell you about this okay now look at the equation the equation is delta n by delta t is equal to minus lambda n not okay now divide n not on both side and multiply it delta t on both sides so we will get delta t divided by n not is equal to minus lambda into delta t okay taking integration on both side so it will be so i took integration on both side so look at here there is a rule if a function has a derivative in the numerator so we will take a, no, a nature log of that term and we know that integration uh, uh, first i am going to define the limit so this decay is process starting from n not up to n this is the initial number of nuclei and this is the final so the starting from n not and up to n and the initial time is zero the final time is t okay now look at here the limits are coming from n not to n and we know that the integration and the derivative cancel each other effect the derivative and the integration are inverse in anti uh, of one another so they will be cancelled so we will get lambda t okay now putting the limit here so how we can put the limit so we should put upper limit minus lower limit so first put the upper limit so it will be so it will be nature log ln ln mean nature log okay so if we put uh, the upper limit that is n so put uh, n instead of n not so that will be ln n minus lower limit so lower limit is n not so n not so it will be minus lambda t okay and we know that if there is a minus in the nature logs so these terms will be can be written in the form of division n by n not is equal to is equal to minus lambda t okay now to cancel the nature log we should take the uh, anti log on both side so taking taking anti nature log on both side okay so if you take uh, anti nature log here on this side n by n not and anti nature log anti log on this side so i took anti nature log on both sides so log and anti log will be cancelled so it will be n by n not and here if you take the anti log of any value so that will be shift into the exponential so if you multiply n on both sides so it will be n not e power minus lambda t this is the equation of radioactive decay law this shows this shows the decay process is an exponential function the decay process is an exponential function okay so now let us talk about the half life what is meant by the half life okay half life is actually a time half life is a time which time it is okay it is a time in which the sample remains half okay the time so half life is represented by t1 over 2 it is the time 
in which the sample remains half of its initial value. This is the remaining sample and N0 is the initial. So if the remaining sample remains half of the original, so that is called the half-life. Suppose if we have a sample of 1000 nuclei and it becomes 500, this is called, this time is called half-life. The time in which the 1000 nuclei remains 500 nuclei, this is called first half-life. If they further decay and remaining are 250, this is called the second half-life. If they further decay and the remaining nuclei are 125, this is called the third half-life. So half-life means the time in which the sample remains half. So that time is called half-life. Okay, putting these values in the equation. So the equation is n is equal to n naught e power minus lambda t. So look at the equation. So put n is equal to n naught by 2. So we will get n naught, we will get, uh, so put n is equal to n naught by 2 and put t is 1 over 2 means the half life. Okay. So n naught and naught will be cancelled. So we will get 1 over 2 is equal to e power minus lambda into half life. So taking log on both sides. So if you take log on both sides, so what will, what we have look. So I took nature log on both sides. So we know that if the terms are mm, there in the division, so we, we can write in the form of subtraction in the nature log. This is the property of nature log. And we know that another property that we can shift the exponent into the coefficient. So it will be lambda t1 over 2 into ln e. Okay. We know that a nature log of 1 is 0. You can check by calculator. So minus ln 2 is equal to, and we know that ln e is equal to 1. You can check by calculator. So we will get uh, an ln e is equal to 1. So minus ln 2 is equal to minus lambda t1 over 2. So minus minus will be cancelled. So look what we have. Nature log of 2 is equal to lambda into 1 over 2. So divide lambda on both sides. So we will get the equation for the half life that is ln 2 divided by lambda. What is ln 2? ln 2 is a constant number. So what is its value? You can check by calculator that is 0 0.0.693 divided by lambda. This is the equation for the half life. If someone asks you, half life, uh, on what factor half life depends upon? So you should answer it that half life depends upon the lambda, means the nature of material. So if lambda depends upon the nature of the material, so half life is also depends upon the nature of material. So if the nucleus is more stable, if the sample is more stable, its value of lambda will be smaller. If the value of lambda is smaller, its half life will be very large. Suppose if a sample is very unstable, if a very a sample is less stable, means the most unstable. So its value of lambda will be very greater. If the value of lambda is very greater, its half-life will be very smaller. So it means that the half-life depends upon the stability of the nucleus. Okay. Now, this is all about the half-life and the radioactive decay law. So remember, radioactive decay law is exponential uh, decrease in the sample means the random decrease in the uh, in the a sample and half life means uh, the time in which the sample remains half that is called the half life this is all about uh, this topic if you have any queries you can ask in whatsapp group or um, you can comment on the video so i'll inshallah answer it okay take care love face